Hello and welcome to this lecture on fundamentals of electric drives. In the last lecture we were discussing about the DC dynamic braking of induction motor. So, uh, today we will take up another type of dynamic braking which is called self excited dynamic braking of induction motor. Now, in this case what we do we excite the induction uh, motor uh, by using capacitor bank. Let us see how we uh, achieve the self excited uh, dynamic braking of induction motor. So, what we have here is that an induction motor is normally running from the three phase supply. Now, when we want to brake it using self excited uh, braking, we disconnect the three phase supply uh, and then what we do we apply a capacitor bank to the stator of the induction motor. So, what we have here is we have three phase line and uh, the motor is a induction motor which is supplied from the three phase line so we connect the capacitors here also another capacitor between the two. So, we have three capacitors here and then this is a switch which is disconnected which disconnect the motor from the mains. So, here the motor is running, but uh, instead of three phase AC supply we have connected a bank of capacitors. Now, what happens? the capacitor provide the necessary excitation to the motor. So, motor will have some excited voltage and that is called self excitation and the excitation is something very similar to that of the excitation of a sound generator. Let us see how it is excited. So, we have the characteristic here and uh, this is a magnetization characteristic and always we have some residual magnetism here. So, this is the saturation characteristic because the core is a saturable core and this is E, E is the phase voltage and this we call as I m same as or I c the capacitor current RMS value. Now, uh, when we connect the capacitor, the capacitor has a load line which is a straight line. Now, this is a slope we can draw a continuous straight line here and there is the intersection of this capacitor load line this is the capacitor load line and the slope is what is the slope? slope is 1 by omega c is the capacitance value here and uh, let us say what I am doing here is, is root 3 times of E this is the line voltage we are plotting the line voltage. So, uh, this is 1 by omega c. So, c is the value of the capacitance. So, each capacitance has a value c and the frequency is omega here. So, the reactance of each capacitance is 1 by omega c. So, the capacitive reactance is 1 by omega c. So, when the capacitance are connected in delta across the terminal, they see the line voltage. So, the capacitive current is equal to the line voltage which is root 3 into the phase voltage by x c. x c is 1 by omega c. So, that is equal to root 3 e into omega c. So, this is the capacitance current. So, the capacitance 
current will will flow here if we drop a perpendicular here this uh, this current will be the capacitance current now this current will be flowing in the motor so this current is a leading current so the motor is supplying a leading current supplying a leading current is equivalent to taking a lagging current so we can say that this is equal to the magnetizing current line to line magnetizing current of an induction machine so it means this capacitive current which is which is leading in nature is being being given by the motor motor is drawing equivalently a lagging current which is im im is called the magnetization current of the induction motor magnetization current of the induction motor now since i have we have a little back emf here so this will self excite just like a uh, sound generator and it will finally settle down at full speed full value of the voltage so this is how the self excitation takes place okay so now the motor is now having some induced dmf and it is circulating a current in the rotor and the stator there is a losses so because of the losses the motor uh, power will be dissipated in i square r loss and the motor will gradually decelerate so this is called the braking now when the motor speed comes down the induced dmf also comes down the frequency also comes down so let us draw the magnetizing characteristic and the capacitance load line for a reduced frequency now if the frequency reduces what happens if the frequency reduces we will get a different magnetization characteristic this is for a reduced value of frequency frequency has reduced so if the frequency has reduced the the magnetization characteristic also uh, reduce proportionately so this is a this is a value for reduced frequency then maybe maybe this is f1 this is f2 so f2 is less than f1 when the when the speed or frequency reduces we have a reduced value of the induced dmf and if the frequency reduces the slope will increase the capacitance a uh, load line is inversely proportional to omega omega is 2 pi f so if the frequency reduces xc will go high so we'll have a, a load line which is which will go up so this is the capacitance load line which is now a different value so the intersection was earlier at this point this is the operating uh, point earlier now the operating uh, point will be at a reduced value of voltage so the voltage reduces so it means as the frequency reduces the voltage decreases the current also decreases because the effective current here is now reduced in this case so the the current corresponding to this is now a reduced value if uh, this was im1 this value is im2 so im2 is less than uh, im1 the current is reduced when the losses are also reduced the braking torque also reduces and gradually the motor comes down to zero speed and after certain speed below certain speed there will not be any self excitation so this is one way of braking of uh, induction machine which is called a self excited braking of induction motor now we have uh, discussed about the motoring and braking of a conventional induction machine now let us discuss about the speed control of induction motor using solid state devices the first type of speed control is by using a voltage regulator so let us discuss about the speed control of an induction motor using a voltage regulator or voltage controller speed control of induction motor we sometimes call this as im induction motor by ac voltage controller now let's see what is the application 
this type of uh, speed control is usually uh, applied for fan and pump type of application. Now, what happens here is the following that we have the torque speed characteristic of the machine of the motor speed in the y axis torque in the x axis is the origin. Now, this is the normal torque speed characteristic of an induction machine. So, we have the maximum torque which is occurring here T max at certain value of and this is corresponding to applied voltage that is V 1. Now, the voltage is reduced, if the voltage is reduced the torque will also reduced because we have seen that the torque is proportional to V square. So, if you reduce the voltage torque reduces as V square. So, uh, if you if we reduce the voltage we, we get a reduced torque this is for but the peak torque is occurring as the same value of speed. Now, this is for V 2 and V 1 is greater than V 2. Now, how will the speed control happen here? Now, the load in this case is a fan or pump type of load. In fan or pump type of load, the torque is proportional to speed square. Let us draw the load characteristic here. So, if we have a fan type of load, we get the load characteristic which is like this, this is T L, T L is equal to k into omega m square. The torque is proportional to the speed speed of the uh, fan or speed of the pump. The first intersection is here, we see that the intersection for the first characteristic is here. So, we have the corresponding speed which is here. Now, you, when we reduce the uh, voltage, the intersection happens at this point. So, if this is omega m 1, so we can reduce the speed by reducing the voltage to omega m 2 and so on. If you further reduce the voltage, we get different characteristic which is here and and this will lead to the intersection at this point and this point is still a stable point. So, this is omega m 3 and thus we have good range of speed control by, by using voltage controller. Now, how do we use the or how do we implement the voltage controller? We can have a three phase circuit or we can have a single phase circuit because this is also applicable to single phase induction motor. So, let us see a single phase circuit first. So, we have a single phase circuit in this case what we have here is the following that we have the input AC and we use track. What we use here is the track, it is a low power circuit and this is our induction motor. So, this is output current, this is output voltage, this is the input AC. So, uh, the output voltage and the current waveform will look like this. This is the input supply which is sinusoidal, omega t in the x axis and in the y axis we can have the voltage. So, this is alpha, alpha is the triggering angle. So, we trigger this, this uh, uh, triac in both the cycle, both the half cycle. In the positive half cycle this is at alpha, the negative half cycle this is at, at pi plus alpha. So, the current starts from 0 here and the current comes down to 0 at some value that is equal to beta and here the current uh, reverses 
and this is the current in the negative half cycle. So, this angle is beta here and this angle is pi plus beta. Okay. So, the output uh, voltage waveform will look like this, this is the output voltage waveform. So, beyond pi also there is conduction because the, the current is conducting up to beta. So, this will be like this and this will continue in the negative half cycle. So, the voltage reverses and the conduction will be like this and since this is a periodic we have the conduction like this. So, this is the output voltage V naught and we have the output current. The voltage and currents are alternating in nature, but however, by controlling alpha we can control the RMS of the output voltage. So, when we control the RMS of the output voltage, the torque is reduced and hence the speed is controlled. Similarly, we can extend this to a three phase voltage controller. If we have a three phase circuit which is meant for higher power application, single phase is uh, commonly used for fan type of application. When, a, uh, when we have a single phase motor, a single phase fan, we use a uh, simple voltage regulator, a triac based regulator to control the speed. For higher power, we go for three phase voltage controller which consists of not triac but anti parallel thyristors. Let us see three phase AC voltage controller. So, a three phase AC voltage controller are used for higher power applications. Now, here what we have instead of triac, we go for anti parallel thyristors or SCRs. This is for phase A. Similarly, for phase B, we have another anti parallel thyristor, and for phase C, we have a CRs so the input is three phase ac supply we apply the ac here and then this is our induction motor which is connected to a fan or pump type of load. So, uh, the load in this case is fan or pump type of load is connected to fan or pump type of load here. Now, uh, the SCRs in this case are triggered in a particular sequence. The sequence is T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 and T6 and the triggering pulse are delayed by 60 degree. T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6 and the delay between two successive triggering pulses is 60 degree. So, the triggering sequence is in this case is T 1 and then we, we trigger uh, T 2, then T 3, T 4, T 5 and T 6. In fact, when we uh, trigger T 2, we apply also the triggering pulse to T 1 to maintain the continuity, we apply to T 2 T 1, then T 3 T 2, T 4 T 3, T 5 T 6, T 4, T 6, T 1 and T 1 T 6. So, what we do? We overlap the triggering pulse. The reason is if we just apply a single pulse, the voltage controller may not start at all. So, the controller to or the triggering pulse to each SCR is a pair of pulses. 
like this. If you say that T1 is being triggered by this pair of pulses, like this T2 is being triggered by the pair of pulses and so on and this, this distance is 60 degree. So, this is how uh, AC voltage controller is uh, triggered to control the output voltage. Now, let us find out the efficiency in case of voltage control. So, we have we have to calculate the efficiency, efficiency of induction motor under voltage control. So, we neglect the stator uh, impedance, neglecting stator impedance. For simplicity, we can draw the equivalent circuit which is consisting of the rotor only. So, we have the equivalent circuit which is XR prime and this is RR prime. By S. For simplicity, we have ignored the stator resistances, the stator resistance, stator leakage reactance. Now, here the current which is flowing in the rotor circuit is IR prime, and the input here is this is the input in this case P input, and P input is same as the air gap power which is PZ. So, we can say that P input is same as P air gap is equal to this is a single phase equivalent circuit. So, for three phase we write here IR square into RR by S. Since we have a circuit where we have the resistance only, the power will be consumed only in the resistance. And in the rotor also we have copper loss, the rotor copper loss. So, the rotor copper loss is equal to 3 I r square into R r prime. Now, the output power which is coming out of this is P out. So, that is equal to P out is equal to P air gap minus the rotor copper loss. That is equal to 3 I r square R r 1 by S minus 1 that is equal to 3 I r square into R r prime into 1 minus S by S. Now, when we calculate efficiency, efficiency is the, is the ratio of output power by the input power. So, we calculate the efficiency is P out by P in that is equal to 3 I r square R r 1 minus S by S divided by the input is 3 I r square R r prime by S. Now, that is equal to 1 minus S. So, the efficiency in this case for uh, voltage controlled induction motor is 1 minus S. So, it means if we have higher slip, the efficiency is uh, going to be less. So, if slip is close to 1, efficiency is less. If slip is close to 0, efficiency is high. So, when we have a fan which is being controlled by a voltage regulator, we should operate it at higher speed to get higher efficiency. So, efficiency decreases with, re with reduction in speed. So, efficiency decreases, efficiency decreases with decrease in speed. So, this is uh, the control of induction motor by voltage control which is uh, applied for low power application primarily for fan application where efficiency is not a very big issue. For high power, uh, the voltage control is not preferred.
because when we use voltage control and the speed is low, efficiency decreases. So, for higher power, we should have better ways of speed control. So, what we do at higher power is voltage and frequency control. So, we control both voltage and frequency. So, uh, let us see what is the voltage and frequency control for an induction motor. So, let us see that the, the torque equation is given as 3 by omega m s into v square divided by r s plus r r by s whole square plus x s plus x r square into r r prime by s. Now, we know that the maximum torque occurs at this slip x max t is equal to r r prime by r s square plus x s plus x r prime whole square under root. So, we have a plus minus, the plus is for the motoring action and the minus is for the generating action. So, uh, this is a normal characteristic of induction uh, motor, we, we have maximum value of torque and the maximum value of torque occurs at a slip of x max t. If you substitute this x max t in this torque equation, we get the maximum torque value. So, t max is given as 3 by 2 omega m s into v square divided by r s plus minus r s square plus x s plus x r whole square. So, uh, we can also uh, rewrite this in the particular form k into v by f square divided by r s by f plus minus r s by f whole square plus 4 pi square into l s plus l r square. So, uh, the torque speed characteristic of an induction motor can be expressed in terms of voltage and frequency as given by this equation. So, in this case what we do? We vary the voltage as well as the frequency. So, that is called the variable voltage and variable frequency control of induction motor. So, we have an advantage that by varying voltage and uh, frequency, we can maintain the peak torque constant and we can also have higher efficiency. So, we will be discussing uh, more about variable voltage and variable frequency control of induction motor in the next lecture.